I arrived at the ski resort on December 3, 2001. I put on my ski equipment and excitedly rushed to the gondola. When the gondola reached the top of the mountain, I saw a beautiful white snow covering the surrounding mountains, which made me feel extra excited. I glided down the ski slope, enjoying the speed and freedom. Suddenly, I came across an icy area. My body lost its balance and I fell heavily to the ground. I felt a sharp pain spread through my fingers. I saw my thumb bent into a strange shape. I realized that my thumb was probably broken. I tried to squeeze my finger hard, but the pain became more intense. I rushed to find a nearby staff member. When I arrived at the hospital, my finger was already very swollen. After an initial examination, the doctor told me I needed surgery because I had broken my thumb. I felt very scared, but I knew it was necessary. The staff quickly scheduled me for surgery and took me to the operating room. An anesthesiologist and a nurse were preparing to put me under anesthesia. However, the anesthesiologist left on short notice, leaving only the nurse behind. Not long after, I suddenly felt dizzy. My breathing became more and more difficult, as if something was pressing on my chest. I felt like I was going to suffocate. I started to feel very scared and didn't know what was happening. I tried to scream, but something seemed to be stuck in my throat. My consciousness was getting fuzzy and everything around me started to become a blur. I later learned that the anesthetic had been injected into my arteries by the nurse. Eventually, it went directly into my heart. This mistake caused my body to react violently, and my breathing and heartbeat began to become irregular. Suddenly, I heard a loud bang. It was as if my body had been torn apart. A strong force pulled me out of my body. My pain disappeared and the feeling was very relaxing. Suddenly, I heard the screams of the nurses. The nurse rushed out of the operating room, shouting as she ran. At that time, I didn't know what was happening. I started to feel confused and scared. Then, the doctors burst into my room. They used various devices to monitor my heartbeat and breathing while starting emergency treatment. I was like a bystander, standing next to the operating table. Around me, nurses were handling various equipment and medications. I could see their hands moving rapidly, and their faces wore expressions of concentration and tension. They were injecting some kind of drug into my body. Suddenly. A hand was pressed against my head. A man's voice told me, it's time for you to get out of here. As the hand pressed on my head, I felt a mysterious force. I felt my soul become lighter. When I turned around, I didn't find anyone. I didn't know where the voice was coming from. I found no one around me except the doctor and the nurse. Suddenly, I appeared in a meadow. The grass around me was very high, almost up to my waist. A breeze blew by and I smelled a sweet aroma. I lay down on the grass and felt a sense of comfort I had never felt before. In this world, everything seemed to have life. Every tree, every leaf, every blade of grass has its own story. They showed me the beauty and infinite possibilities of life with their soft gestures. A huge tree suddenly appeared in front of my eyes, its height surpassing any tree I had ever seen. Its dense leaves seemed to cover the entire sky. The bark appeared to be made up of countless tiny lines, like a giant picture scroll. The branches were covered with fruits of all shapes and sizes, all glittering attractively. There were many small animals playing under the tree. As I walked under the tree, I felt a surge of energy pouring into my body. Here, time became eternal. 
I gazed at the bark of the tree and noticed that it was covered with countless tiny holes. I noticed that the lines on the bark were not stationary, but were writhing as if they were communicating with me. I started to climb up the roots of the tree. In the tree. I saw all kinds of life forms, which all found their homes in the trunk. The tree seemed to be a large nature library. I continued climbing upward. Here, I felt the mysterious power of the universe. I took a deep breath and closed my eyes. I felt myself merging into this tree of life and becoming a part of it. When I reached the top of the tree, I saw a huge cloud. It emanated a sacred aura, an aura that captivated me. The edges of the cloud emitted a faint white light. Suddenly, an unmistakable light penetrated the cloud. This light filled me with power and hope inside. The bright light in the cloud grew stronger and stronger, and my body began to glow as if the whole world was illuminated. I began to hear countless voices calling my name. These voices felt familiar and unfamiliar to me. A mysterious force was guiding me, and I slowly walked toward that light. The light was getting stronger and stronger, as if it was going to swallow everything. I was not afraid, but felt very calm. As I entered the light, I felt my soul began to vibrate incessantly, as if it was being illuminated and purified by a mysterious power. My thinking also became clear, as if my mind had entered a higher level of consciousness. I didn't know the source of this power, but I knew it was guiding me. In the light, I saw countless mysterious patterns and shapes, as if they were expressions of some kind of wisdom. Next, countless images flashed before my eyes. All were snippets of my past life, every second of which was recorded. I saw scenes of myself as a child, good times with friends and relatives, and difficulties I had encountered. These images seemed to be alive and kept surfacing before my eyes. These clips recorded my growth and experiences. I saw the dreams and goals I once had, and I also saw my current state and achievements. Suddenly, the voice reappeared. He asked me when was the most impressive moment in these images. I pondered for a moment and thought that moment would be the day I finished my doctorate. Suddenly, the image before me came to the day I graduated. I stepped onto the campus of my alma mater in a modest outfit. As I stood on the stage and received the certificate from my teacher, I felt a great sense of pride and excitement inside. People throughout the hall cheered and I felt their recognition of me. I could see the expressions of my family as they hugged me with excitement. My mother shed tears of excitement, and my father patted my shoulder with excitement. The voice reappeared and he asked me, is there more? I felt a little confused, as if he wasn't too happy with the answer I gave. I remembered that I had won the downtown championship in a ski competition. The scene in front of me changed again. This time, I saw a snowy white mountain. The scene of my skiing appeared before my eyes and I felt the cold air brush against my cheeks. That speed made my heart beat faster, but I was still full of confidence and courage. Finally, I reached the finish line and became the skiing champion of our city. A cheer came from my side. The voice reappeared, and he didn't affirm or deny my actions. He simply said, let's see this. Suddenly, another image came to my eyes. It was a little boy who looked very thin and was wearing tattered clothes. He was squatting on the side of the road crying. The little boy looked very confused and I could feel his helplessness. I asked him, do you need help? He nodded, and I started to take him to find his way home. On the way, I told him many interesting stories, hoping to distract him from his fear. 
Finally, we found his home. This incident was many years ago and I had long forgotten about it. He told me that learning to help others is the most important thing, as opposed to personal honor. When that voice said that, I began to reflect on my own life. I realized that I had been too focused on my own success and had neglected others around me. He asked me, did anyone help you in the process of earning your doctorate? I thought about it for a moment. And indeed there were many people who helped me. The voice went on to say, your success is not just because of your own efforts, but also because of the support and help of others. Your achievements become meaningful when you can help others. I felt very ashamed. I realized that despite my success in some areas, I didn't seem to be doing well in helping others. The voice finally told me, you have a lot to learn, and it's time for you to go back. I realized that my soul was beginning to move backwards. I was moving quickly away from this place. Once again, Many images appeared before my eyes. I felt like I was traveling through the bonds of time and space, heading in an unknown direction. Suddenly, I felt pain in my body, as if something was tormenting me. I returned to my hospital bed. I slowly opened my eyes as doctors and nurses gathered around me. Later, I experienced a brief coma. It took a month for my health to slowly improve. My memory began to clear up and I remembered the mysterious voice and everything I had experienced. I realized that I needed to rethink my life. While my personal accomplishments made me proud, they didn't represent the whole of who I was. I needed to focus more on how I could help others and how I could become a better person. This time of pain and suffering taught me that the most important thing in life is not personal achievement, but how to make a positive impact on others. Later, I joined a volunteer organization to help people in need in any way I could. I also started to be active in some charity activities. I know that I still have a lot to learn, but I will keep going. Dot.